In my sermon last week, I explained why Jacob is a Jewish spiritual hero versus the flawless image of heroes and saviors in other faiths. Jacob is a different kind of spiritual hero, for he is not born perfect. And even in this week's Torah portion, Vayishlach, when Jacob receives the new name Israel, he never achieves a flawless character. Jacob is not a Jewish hero because of what he is. Jacob is a Jewish hero because of who he is constantly becoming. We witnessed that growth this week in the Torah in ways to which I hope we can all relate. When Jacob was younger and prayed to God after he stole the birthright from his big brother Esau, his prayer was essentially bargaining. God, if you do X, then I will continue this people, my parents, Isaac and Rebekah, Abraham and Sarah started. This week, we see Jacob's evolution as he resumes his homeward journey 20 years later for what will be either a reunion or a major confrontation with the brother he wronged. Looking up, Jacob sees in the distance Esau coming, accompanied by 400 men. The Torah says, And Jacob was greatly frightened by the scene, upset, filled with anxiety, you think? The early rabbi suggests that Jacob was frightened because of the harm to his family that was about to unfold and that Jacob was upset because of the harm he might have to do to Esau in self-defense. So this week, a more mature Jacob at that moment offers a more mature prayer. In place of bargaining, Jacob prays this. O God of my parents and grandparents, Katonti, I am humbled. I feel unworthy for all the blessings in my life, for all the unforeseen kindnesses you have shown and showered on me through no merit of my own. Looking back on my life, save me from my fear right now, God. Save me from what I am fearing might happen after I parted on painful terms with my brother Esau. It's precisely these verses, believe it or not, which form the lyrics of the number one single in Israeli music in 2014, composed and sung by a deeply religious man and artist, Yonatan Razel. Razel brings to life these words, the emotions behind them in a beautiful way, capturing our human journey and the resilience necessary in the face of life's fragility. The kind of fragility we are all feeling right now during COVID and the resilience and perspective we need for just a few more months to get to the other side. In the Torah text, Jacob finds himself between two rivers, symbolizing the known one in front of him and the unknown of what is yet to come in the distance. Sound familiar? Like Jacob, we fear what's ahead. Jacob stands at the river's edge, confronting the pain of the past, letting go in the present, and praying for a better future. Sound familiar? Since March, many of us have felt wronged for no good reason. Whether it's something as inconvenient as having to change the date for a long-planned wedding or bar mitzvah or other family event, to something as sad as not being able for safety reasons to attend the funeral of a loved one or even be with a loved one during his or her time of illness, Jacob will find the courage and conviction this week to cross the river, face his brother, the uncertain reality that awaits him. If you're Jewish, then you are here because of Jacob's courage and conviction. 
And before encountering Esau in the flesh, the great female biblical commentator Nahama Leibovitz writes, Jacob's spirit struggled with the spirit of Esau. That's who the mysterious being in his wrestling match was in his dream. Only through self-struggle and change and with repentance and humility could Jacob ask for his brother's forgiveness. As Esau rushes toward Jacob, we still don't know if Esau is planning to attack him. But Esau knows. Esau recognizes, senses, that his brother is a changed man. The Torah relates that Esau falls on his brother's neck and kisses him. And then, literally, the Torah says in Genesis 33, the two brothers burst into tears. Now, we don't have to puff up the story or the epilogue. They'll still end up living in different places. And certainly not every family relationship is repairable. But we can still grow. We can still grow better, no matter what our age. As my friend and colleague Rabbi Dan Moskovitz writes in our Reform Jewish Commentary, the Torah is full of teachings, and in this week's portion, perhaps it imparts the most important lesson of all, to have the courage to change. But in order to change, we first have to know who or what we are changing from. We have to know ourselves to be able to confront what may be painful within us or shameful. Self-knowledge is that first step, but it's not enough. You still have to cross the river. And it's up to each of us to take the next step as Jacob did. Whatever that next step is, with the courage to deal with our shortcomings, insecurities, anxieties, and flaws. This isn't just high drama way back then. It's real life now. We need each of us to cross the river in front of us and whatever obstacles are in the distance to become Jacob's namesake Israel, Yisrael, and become the blessings we were meant to be for however long these physical bodies God has given us can live. Now, after this high drama, you know what Jacob does? He builds a house, and he stays put. He's done running. He settles down. He has nothing else to escape from. He's found himself, and therefore, he has found his home. He's finally found peace. Rabbi Moskowitz gets it right when he says, and I quote, before Jacob crossed over, fear and uncertainty obscured his vision and broke his hope. Now, after struggling with the past, making amends and receiving forgiveness, Jacob sets down roots and builds a future he could not have imagined just a short while ago. My dear friends, this week in America and the world, we find ourselves between the reality of a record number of lives lost to COVID, an operation warp speed promising a vaccine by spring. In the meantime, though, we stand between the two rivers, those two realities, like Jacob, one filled with fear, the other filled with hope, humbled, vulnerable, and hopefully resilient like Jacob. So Yonatan Razel, who composed that gorgeous melody to this Katonti story this week about Jacob, he adds a few additional Hebrew words, not from the Torah portion, but from the book of Psalms. The words mean, for the unmerited kindnesses I have experienced, God, you have saved me from the lowest depths. What are those words about? Many think they related to what happened a few years back when the composer's four-year-old daughter Rivka fell off a porch and was in a coma for weeks. And thousands around the world were praying for her recovery, and the daughter suddenly woke up and was eventually and miraculously healed. People who knew this story assumed that this powerfully moving song, Katonti, was an ode of gratitude for Rivka's recovery, but that is not the origin, since he composed the song long before the accident for someone else. 
His grandpa, an accomplished cellist, Mark Rosalar. My grandfather, Jonathan Razel says in an interview, my grandfather was deported during the Holocaust from his hometown in Holland. And when he found himself on a transport going to the death camp Sobibor, he somehow managed to jump off the train and save himself miraculously. Later in his life, my grandfather spoke to me about the night he jumped and fled into the forest. Quote, this is his grandfather, I had nothing but the clothes on my back, and now I have a whole family with grandchildren in the land of Israel. So after the grandfather passed away, the composer wrote Katonti in his memory. I, Micah, Rabbi, I always find myself humming Katonti this time of year because it's this week's Torah portion, and I'm struck by how secular Israeli Jews identify so strongly with this song and its recounting of this story I'm telling. Its message resonates wherever Jews are, whether in Israel or in America, all of you streaming this service from apartments and homes and households across Memphis and beyond. The text connects, I think, because we are all Jacob's children. We're part of the namesake, the people Israel. Feeling part of something larger is a hallmark of maturity and humility. Humility, katonti, does not mean thinking little of oneself, but rather being aware of realities greater than oneself, including this great synagogue, the Jewish people to which we belong, and that greater reality and source of life, some of us call Adonai or rock, friend, compassionate one, God, so many other loving names. Or as Razel himself once said, we Jews are a people who give thanks, and we can never thank enough for every Jew at his or her core is humble. Every Jew, as he or she grows up, searches to be in touch with that humility, vulnerability, and recognition of God's many kindnesses in the face of whatever obstacles are in front of us, just like Jacob. We just have to get past the obstacles. Getting past the obstacles, my friends, defines our lives especially the obstacle of fear, which both Jacob and Esau overcome this week in the Torah. Through the story we learn in closing that every step of life has its own revelation and that God is present in each discovery, each step, each moment. Katonti mikol hachasadim umikol haemet asher asita et avdecha, as we stand between the rivers of the past, present, and future, we remain grateful for our survival and health, and we ask God not only to save us, but to help us save each other through these COVID days. Amen. Mikol hachasadim umikol haemet asher asita et avdecha. Katonti mikol hachasadim umikol haemet asher asita et avdecha. Katonti mikol hachasadim umikol haemet. אשר עשית את עבדך. קטונתי מכל החסדים ומכל האמת אשר עשית את עבדך. כי במחלי עברתי את הירדן, עתה הייתי לשני מחנות. הצילני נא, הצילני נא, הצילני נא. כי במחלי עברתי את הירדן, 
אתה ראיתי לי שני מחנות, הצילי נינה, הצילי נינה, הצילי נינה. מכל החסדים ומכל 